PeteTools.com. G'day, 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 guys. Pete here to annoy you again. Hey, what am I going on about today? Well, I've got five tips for you if your bloody plasma torch won't strike an arc. You know, when you go to cut something with your plasma cutter, especially if you're using a drag tip like this torch is, and it just won't strike the arc, I've got five things you should check before you go and take your machine in for a service, because you might just be able to fix it yourself. Anyway, guys, same as usual, like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments below. Always remember to use the thank you button if you want to give the old get a tip. And let's get into it, eh? Now, there's nothing worse, guys, when you go to cut something and the bloody machine won't work. It really pisses me off. And all it does is just annoys the crap out of you. And then you don't want a plasma cut anymore and you think your machine's a piece of junk and you know how it goes. But anyway, that's what, that's what I found anyway. Actually, I've got five little tips for you guys that might help you out before you get that annoyed that you end up throwing your machine to the other side of the workshop. Anyway, number one. Doesn't matter what sort of plasma torch you've got, guys. Your earth lead. That is one of the main things on a plasma cutter. You've got to have a proper circuit for to get the thing to work. If your earth lead's crappy, then your cut's going to be crappy. It won't start, it'll annoy you, and then we get all sorts of issues arising from that. And as you can see with this one, guys, if we zoom in on this one, guys, you can actually see that this is not a very good earth lead either. Can you see that in here, guys? This wire in here is broken. That wire is supposed to loop right round and connect to the other side of this jaw here, which gives us a proper circuit, but I'll be using it with only half like this. I mean, it still works okay, but we're not going to get as much power as what we would if we had that connected all the way through. So anyway, guys, that's the first thing I'd look out for. Just watch out for your earth leads, because they are really, really important. Another thing to check for guys, especially with these cheap Chinese machines, not that there's anything wrong with cheap Chinese machines, I use them all the time. It's my favourite machine because it's cheap like me. But check your bloody consumables, especially the some ceramic here. If you have a look here, you can see I've got a new ceramic on here. But these things get really, really brittle and once you use your torch for a while, it gets hot. If you put that down hard on your bench, it will put a slight crack normally up the inside of it here. Once you get a crack up the inside of it, the thing just won't work. It won't strike an arc and you're going to be awfully kissed off. <laughs> See, if we have a look at this one here, guys, I've done that. See that? I've dropped it, but it's actually hit a bit hard and it's taken the corner off. Like, this will never work again because all the compressed air comes out of the other side of it and it doesn't swirl around the swirl ring like it's supposed to. And the same goes with any sort of other torch, guys. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a branded or a non-branded torch. The principle's the same. They're all going to have a ceramic. Make sure the ceramic's not cracked. So number three, guys, this is for the PT31 torch. You yeah, take your swirl ring off like that. Also, these can get cracks in them. You see they've got holes there. So you don't know if you can see that, guys. It's got, actually got holes in it here. It's got about four holes all the way around. What that does is the compressed air starts to swirl round and round and round. And then it gives you your cutting action. Now, if you've got a little crack, sometimes it's caused by overheating. Now, if you get a crack in it, the same as like this ceramic here, then the same thing's going to happen. It's not going to arc properly, and you're going to get all sorts of issues with it, and it's going to really annoy you. Now, exactly the same goes for this plasma torch. It's a different style, but it's exactly the same principle. We've got the ceramic on here. So instead of it being white like that, obviously it's pink, but it's exactly the same principle. That's what I'm saying. All torches are basically the same. And this will get a crack right down the center of it here once it gets hot if you drop it hard. And then it'll affect the way the plasma torch cuts and you won't get the arc coming out of it properly. Also like this torch, some other torches don't have a swirl ring like this. What they have is this. So if we have a look in here guys, if we can see in here. This one here guys has got a built in swirl ring. Like some of the other main manufacturers of torches, they have a built-in swirl ring. Now, if you have a look down here, guys, you can see we've got ear holes coming out here, and here, and here. That's for the ear before it hits the ceramic. And our swirl ring, instead of us putting it on manually, is pressed into the torch down here, if you can see that. Now, sometimes they get a crack in them as well, and these are unreplaceable in these torches. So you basically got to buy another torch if you have that sort of issue. But very seldom these get cracks in them because they're contained in this brass sort of holder thing here. Now another tip I've got for you guys, this style torch here. Because it's got a screw in 
electrode like that make sure that there's no crap underneath where the electrode sits in here because if you have crap in here it'll make a short circuit between the swirl ring and the electrode on the inside and it won't give you the spark on the outside now the PT31 torch guys is even worse for what I just showed you because these just have a plug on electrode like so so what happens here if you have a look in here guys you can see here there's we're starting to get pitting on the inside of this holder and you can actually run your finger over it and you can feel it's quite rough I think you can see that in there guys it's pitted and why it's pitted is because when you push this in here and then you screw your ceramic on the top like so even if it's tight, even if it feels tight, it vibrates every time it vibrates it takes a little bit of chunk of metal out of here and it just pits it and pits it and pits it until you haven't really got a proper contact in there so check that guys and if you find that you're starting to pit out like this one is here you can either get a bit of sandpaper and clean it out or you can replace the cutting tip head right guys another tip I've got for you is make sure that you check that the bloody switch and the torch is working because I've had it before because this wire here runs all the way up the lead all the way up into your torch and it gets a little bit thinner when it gets to the torch handle about about here when they make these leads they just clip it all together Sometimes when you drag it around the floor, if you're as clumsy as me, it pulls the bloody clips out and the switch doesn't work on the trigger. So make sure your switch is working. And you can obviously tell that which by pulling the trigger. And you can hear the air coming out of it. And there's another way to check it as well, guys. If you think it's inside the machine and not the torch, do this. Take your torch lead out, like this, the switch lead. And with these cheap Chinese things, it's normally just that two pin thing and it's quite a low voltage as you can see here by the wire. So to check whether the electronics inside your machine are working and it's not your switch, just grab a screwdriver like so and if it's a low voltage one like this, just stick the screwdriver in here in the two prongs for your switch and see if it ignites the plasma torch. There you go. So if you find your switch is not working guys, like I say, just take the plug out of here because it's low voltage, well mine's low voltage anyway, just grab a screwdriver and stick the screwdriver in the two prongs here and you'll hear the switch activate off see I'm not pulling the trigger on this guys activate off so that does exactly the same as what the switch does, but what that'll do is it'll isolate it between where it plugs into the machine to the torch head. So if one goes and the other doesn't, then you know it's either between the torch and the machine, or if it doesn't go the other way around either, then you know it's the machine end. You can also do it with a multimeter, guys. Just stick one prong of your multimeter in here, the positive and the negative. Pull the trigger on your torch and make sure you've got connectivity between the two. That way you know that your switch is working. So guys, that was my five tips. I think it was actually six tips, so you got a bonus one there for free. If that doesn't work, guys, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to take your machine in for a service because I wouldn't recommend that you open it up and start playing with the electronics unless you're an electrician, and I wouldn't make an electrician's what's the name. So there you go. Anyway, guys, same as usual. Like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day in the comments below. If you've got some better ideas, I'm all ears. Anyway, guys, see you next time. Bye. Holy moly guys, I almost forgot to tell you, if you're trying to bend steel and you haven't got a gas torch and you want to use your plasma cutter, check out this video up here, I might have some tips and tricks for you on how to be able to bend steel without actually cutting through it, so you can just bend it with a crescent or whatever to a different shape, using your plasma cutter. Anyway guys, bye.